Okay, so uh, today I'm going to speak about checking global identifiability. This is showing to work with Hong Kong, Alexei Chinikov, and Chia. So uh, before I introduce the identifiability itself, let me show you just one example of a biological model. This is predator-prey model. So uh, what does it mean? It means that like you have a forest, there are rabbits and wolves, and there are some natural interactions between them. And uh, how is this model constructed? So let x1 is number of rabbits, x2 is number of wolves. And you think that, OK, rabbits, they born new rabbits. And this, is, this, this rate is proportional to the number of rabbits. And each time that the rabbit meets a wolf, OK, rabbit might disappear. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is the second term. OK, so uh, then, like, modeler. Uh, constructs, constructs this model, he has this sort of reasoning, uh, but he or she doesn't know the values of corresponding parameters. And if you want to really apply this model to any predictions of future, you have to know those parameters, because yeah, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So uh, the question is, can we get them from some observations? And the situation is might be a bit more complicated if, for example, you cannot uh, measure x1 or x2. For example, rabbits are too fast and too small to count them, actually. So, uh, so it, for example, it might be that you can observe only x1 or only x2. And then you have a question, can I get these all numbers or no chance? So uh, this is actually more or less the general uh, identifiability question, how, how is it? So you have kind of model, what's like... The, what's the answer there? Give an example. Uh, can you tell me what the answer is? I will tell later when I give yeah, definitions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, suspense. suspense. Suspense, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, some intrigue. So, okay. Uh, so the main question is you have this sort of model, and you know that you can measure some things and some you, you cannot. For that example, the answer is not obvious. Do you or do you not? Yes, for the previous example, uh, the answer is not obvious, and I, I will discuss it. So it's it's even a bit non-intuitive. So I, I will I will talk about that. So and you really want to, to somehow understand which parameters can you in principle find if you have noise-free, excellent measurements, and which parameters you just have any hope to find. Okay, so. Uh, and in this situation, when I say uh, word parameters, uh, as you have seen in the previous example, you have two kinds of parameters. Uh, one type is parameters that appear in equations and govern the dynamic, and another type is initial values. So if you want to model the situation, you have to know them both. OK, so uh, why? Hmm? Why do you have to know? If you want to model the whole situation, I mean, you just want to know where to start. 
Well, if you, uh, it depends what you want to find out. Yes, of course. Maybe you are just in, in some certain parameter. It's, the situation might be different, but you, you, you might be interested in both them and them, in principle. Okay. So, but sometimes your interests are somehow restricted because like, you don't care about some things and you care more about other things. Yeah. But there are, what you're saying actually, are you saying that there are frequent situations in which uh, everything has to be known? Yes, uh, okay. there are such situations. But not always, but... Not uh, always. But these are important situations. Yes, yes. Then you w w want to simulate the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, so uh, just to give some very s s simple toy examples, then like you have this uh, equation, x dot is equal to x plus k, then of course if you can observe k, uh, if you can observe x, you can find k. Obviously, because like you can just write this and measure x and x dot at every point that you like, and that's it. And uh, to have example of, it, of the model that is not identifiable, it's also it's, it's a bit stupid, but if your k is actually sum of two different k's, then you cannot just distinguish between them. So this is just because there are infinitely many possibilities. So I will give formal definition of more non-trivial examples later. Actually, our first example is much less trivial. Uh, so, would you would you be a little slower for people who haven't seen this before? Ah, okay, sure, sure. Okay, so yeah, so in this situation, the second model uh, I can find from any for some measurements k1 plus k2 as one whole entity, but I can't distinguish them. I can just put, uh, take something from k1 and put it to k2, and observer will not notice that. So, that plus one here, minus one here, is the same, the same observed behavior. And so you're claiming that you can deduce it by just looking at this, but uh, what you're going to present uh, will address cases in which you cannot say that. Yes, right. yes. So this is kind of artificial example just to first uh, the yes, see the notion on uh, simple situation, but there are uh, very entangled systems there. It's hard to predict what is actually identifiable. So, so and together, I k1 plus k2 would be what I was talking to you about, uh, an aggregate variable. So you can't determine k1 and k2, but you can divide the sum, and it's their sum that affects the outcome of the equation, the population. That's correct. Yes. So, and, 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 why, and, and do you, why do you want to separately determine K1 and K2 if you're only interested in what the systems are? Yeah, this is like, like see, uh, first you want to detect. I wish you came yeah, to the Yeah, I know. Yes, yes. It, 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 it was actually discussed yesterday by, by Nikki. Well, but in other examples, there are cases where you would want to distinguish, but in this toy example, it doesn't really okay. make sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, but anyway, before try to find any remedy, you have to diagnose that you have a problem. Right. So first you have to find that you have such situation, and then you do change of variables, reparameterization, or whatsoever. But first you have to find that. Uh, okay. This is also maybe the, uh, one of the easiest examples that can be explained without technicalities. Oh, okay. So this is the reason. But it turns out, as you point out, this example serves several purposes. So it's a really good example, actually. Simple example is always the best. Especially if it serves several purposes. <laughs> yeah, I would write K1 plus K2 plus K3. <laughs> Great. Thank you. OK, so. Uh, before you formal definition, I want uh, somehow to introduce with what kind of equations do I work, because uh, in the models that we have seen, uh, usually you don't have kind of complicated differential polynomials or such things. You have equations of very, very specific, but actually very wide uh, and express, expressive form of this form. So you have variables x, okay, x, y, and u and mu are all vectors. Okay, uh, so they're bold. So x is actually state variables that somehow uh, define the dynamic of the system, and in general, you don't know them. Uh, what you know are y's that are observable output variables. So they might be some functions of the state. 
This, this is what you can really measure. And U uh, is an input, so maybe first, before doing any measurements, you can maybe apply some force on the, uh, to the system, the force you know and you choose, okay, within some restrictions. So, uh, Y's and U's, our friends, know them, and X's, in principle, are unknown. And so the total vector of parameters, it consists of two parts, of new parameters that appear in dynamics, here and here, and of initial values. So, uh, I will not uh, speak about input that much. Almost everything that I will, okay, everything what I will talk about works with presence of input. Just to simplify the presentation, I will omit it in. So, are you going to uh, talk about control theory then? Uh, control theory is uh, one of possible applications of all these techniques. Not the other one. No, I mean. Be, I mean, the control theory. We have studied this kind of system. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But in control theory, again, again, you, you have... Control theory and all that kind of thing, right? Yes, yes. So control yeah. theory is... is well, I mean, it's, it's I mean they, they have used differential algebra already by the looking at transient degrees and... Algebra. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, 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 I will mention this people from control okay. theory. It's just, this is... Yeah, but in, in, in some sense, this, this language, is, it's, it's very expressive. You can speak about control theory using this language, you can speak about biology, you can speak... Oh, so this... And some general setup. And Could you repeat your question again? What was your question? Could you repeat your question? No, 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 no. See, the, no, no, there's, no okay. there's no question. I'm just seeing ah, no the, the connection um, that people have studied these dynamic systems, but they don't call dynamic. They, I mean, it's control system. Uh, you know, so so the U's are the inputs, for example. So it's observable. The Y's are the outputs. So they're observable. The X is in terms of state. Black box, inside black box, right? So they were expressed by this kind of equation. The, the y equation is a, some kind of a constraint. Uh, maybe you want to feedback that. I mean, you could be also the y if you want to do feedback. And the way they do that in differential algebra, that was done by Fleece uh, in the 1970s, right? And uh, so they use, so, so you put in this x, y, u, right? Um, and then you look at the, um, the transcendent, uh, a, a different transcendent basis, basically, to, to let's say, invert the problems. Uh, you know, they have um, input observation, I mean, observability, and that kind of thing that they study. Now, I don't know whether this is, you know, connected to what you're saying. That's why I'm asking that. So you had a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he gave you an answer. <laughs> Can you, are you going to do an example to show, like, Given a, a system, how what each of these variables are in that system. Yeah. Next slide. Okay. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So we have a system exactly of this form. We have only one x, one y, and uh, three parameters. So mu one and mu two, and initial value of x. So this is kind of when x is linear, then y is also linear, and this model. Uh, can be solved exactly. Just you can write the formula because linear function, linear function, and then you see that this example is L the brother of our f f earlier unidentifiable example because in your observed variable y, again, sum of two parameters occur, and again you don't have any way to split them. So this is a little bit more obscure identifiability. It, it might be even more obscure, uh, much more. So, but this is this equation is all the form we discussed. So, we have state variables, differential equations in terms of state variables, and then we have output y written in terms of state variables and parameters. So, so, so you you were proposing in that uh, uh, um, sort of easier example to replace k one plus k two with a new thing. <laughs> yeah. How would you, how would you uh, do it now? I don't follow your question, sorry. So, okay, let me repeat the question. Do you, Repeating uh, doesn't help. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, let me clarify the question. Okay. May I clarify the question? So, um, uh, well, um, do you, first, do you remember the example of K1 plus K2? Yeah, sure. Okay, and you made the proposal uh, right. to replace K1 plus K2 with something new. 
relabel. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so Let's call it K. Okay. So this example has some similarities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why it has a sum of the parameters. Yeah, right. How would you act in this case? Now, in this case, uh, it, it actually explains why you don't want to uh, make them as an aggregate, even though even though the system behave, behavior won't change if mu2 plus x star don't change. But since mu2 and also x star has different physical meaning, mm -hmm. then you do want them separate. And when x star is an initial condition, condition initial how you start, whereas mu1 uh, is actually a, a rate. Um, in, in a sense, technically speaking, the two shouldn't be added together because they're different dimensions. Uh, Numerically, fine. I mean, you can you can always have three plus four, but if three is a rate, and four is a, a value initial by population, then you should be able to add them. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, but I mean, okay. if the initial system makes sense, then its solution also have to make. Then it, I mean, so mu two mu two is not a rate. You see, it's added to the. No, uh, it, mu two is x dot. That's a rate. No, 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 I'm sorry, okay, okay, okay. okay. Something okay. bias or okay. shift or... I, I misread, sorry about it. I misread. Right. Okay, um, so, so they could be added. So Yeah, they could be added. Sure. So is it a puzzle or is it uh, how to... Is it yeah, then, then you can, yeah, then you can hold it together. So it's not possible to rewrite the system in such a way that... Yeah, because... Oh, well, sure, you can't translate the variable. You just translate the variable by mean two. Ah, so you make and, a and put, that, put them into the uh, initial condition. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, right, if you replace x plus mu2 yeah. with mm -hmm. x tilde, mm -hmm. then the system will be the same, but this is different change of variables that was previous. Different kind of change variables. D different kind of change variables, so... Well, no, it's, no, no, it's still an aggregate variable. The two together is still an aggregate variable. And a lot of systems, the whole idea is to use dimensional analysis to find as few aggregate variables to express the same system, in terms of behavior, not in terms of how many variables there are. And in terms of the algebra, you, you're really saying, um, you know, what, what generates the solution, the, the generic solution of the uh, differential field. And uh, yeah, so how, how would your approach work in this case? Yeah, I would do exactly that. I would do a new change of variable with x plus mu2, but Mu2 is still unidentifiable, so, I mean, it's, it's like... Oh, yeah, Mu2 is still, of course, yesterday. of course, it is not it's, unidentifiable. It's like the but as, as yeah. far as, mm -hmm. let's say, the numerical growth of x, right. it doesn't matter. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, thank you for discussion. So, and now, a uh, positive example that actually will be... I, I will use this example throughout the next slide, so... Uh, in this situation, x grows exponentially, and you observe x plus something, plus some shift. So, in this situation, again, you can write a solution, because, okay, you know that this ex exponential function, and this is how does y loop, and then, actually, using just this formula, you can find formulas for all three parameters. I will do it for you. Uh, so... Uh, you can differentiate three times, and then you see that y dot and y double dot differ just by mu1. So the ratio at every point is mu1. And then you can find x star, but by measuring the derivative at zero, and then you can find mu2. I, I believe this is in control theory they call that the invertibility problem. Whether you can do it. Yes, oh, I mean, no. since this identifiability question raised in different fields, they have several names yeah. in principle. So I will stick to sure. word identifiability today, just not to. No, but the point is that um, no, if what I said is correct, I, I think I'm not a control theorist, okay? But if mm -hmm. what I said is correct, then what you should do is to look at what people in control theory have done. Because they have used different algorithms. Yes, I, 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 I have looked, okay. and I will cite them in okay. several slides. Yeah. So far, I've just explained the definition. I, I, I didn't I have a chance to mention anybody. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm going ahead of Yeah, yeah I, I will mention Fleece and, and Diop and yeah, these this good people. So uh, what I want to point uh, out right now is that all these formulas have 
denominators. So in principle, this nice scheme of finding parameters might fail if some of the numerators vanish. So uh, what we'll talk today about is uh, identifiability in generic case. So generically, they don't vanish. So if you have like mu1 is equal to zero, it's very, very special degenerate case and your exponential growth is actually constant. So uh, today we'll speak about uh, what happens generically because like this uh, non degenerate situation in principle has probability zero, but I don't want to say that this is not interesting and not important problem. I mean, but, sometimes but, you just set some initial conditions and then you set them to generate and this is an, another challenging thing I just will not talk about today. I will talk about generic situation. You had a comment? No, but, but you see, um, all you need to determine these three parameters is, in fact, at one single time, one point, one data point, right? Yeah, one data point is enough for me. It's more subtle than that. So if you are able... Well, of course, I mean, that, that varies. I mean, the measurement is not accurate. Well, William, the, the, the derivatives, it's... If you can calculate the derivative at, at a particular point, uh, oh, yeah, point so the number rate, yes, then yeah, right, it's right, right, right. But you see, so if one y dot, which is the right, you have y double dot over y dot, is it correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if one y dot at certain time is zero, but at other time is not, and the same, you know. Yes, then yes. That would be okay. So yeah, correct. So, so, so you don't... As a function, William. It's vanishing as a function. Ah, yes, yes. I, I mean, as, as, as a function, right. yeah, and actually, I mean, if mu1 is zero, then the system is really unidentifiable because then yeah, uh, true, x is constant yeah. and mu2 are constants and you cannot separate them. Right. So this is really an issue. In this generic case, situation really changes. Right, of course. The equation is different. But however, in practical problems, uh, uh, knowing this generically is sufficiently interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually usually the case because all, yeah. all, all quantities are not actually not, mm -hmm. not exact uh -huh. and, uh, and they okay. usually don't vanish your certain polynomial, which is the denominator. So this, this is what I said about probability zero in principle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so today I will speak about identifiability for generic parameters. And this is exactly the reason why I will do that because otherwise things really change, and this is really a bit different problem. So, uh, and here we are, we're at a for almost formal definition. So, I have this system, I take one of its parameters, theta sub i, and I, I will have actually two notions of identifiability, global and local, so I will mostly use global, so you can, if you want, you can ignore local, but it's also interesting. So, it's a local, global identifiable, if uh, I have these two polynomials, let me explain what, what do they mean. Uh, this P of theta means actually uh, some polynomial that vanishes on all degenerate cases. And non-zero polynomials, you pick non-zero. Yeah, non -zero, yeah, I pick two non-zero polynomials, of course. So, uh, like, if I can uh, identify such degeneracy loss, loss I for thetas, and some differential polynomials, a polynomial in use and their variables that somehow uh, captures degenerate inputs. So if I can find such... You haven't finished that thing, but... Yes, yes, I just... I'm, I, <laughs> I just without I, 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 I don't want to distract you by the uh, second part. <laughs> Are you sure it's clear it's come when, uh, unless you show actually... Because what you're seeing is actually a bit in the right hand. Yes, I want to prepare you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so if I can uh, find such two polynomials such that for every parameter vector that is not degenerate and every input vector that is not degenerate in this sense, so a value of this function at zero is on zero, then if for every such choice, my y uh, corresponding y, I will say what this means in a few seconds, determines the value of this parameter uniquely. So, uh, because, wh what does it mean? Then you pick a parameter vector, and you pick input, then uh, the behavior of state variables is defined because of 
the theorem from differential equations. The solution exists in unique in analytic functions at the point, and then y is also uniquely defined when you fix parameters and input. In some neighborhood, everybody is uniquely defined. So you have unique fun function y, and now if uh, this function determines back the value of theta i uniquely, then theta i is globally identifiable. If it determines uh, up to a finite number of options, then it's locally identifiable. So if you... So by the way, so f and g have, or f at least has constant coefficients. Yes, yes, I didn't say that yet. F, 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 f. The non-constant thing is hidden in u. Yes, yes, f and, f and g have constant coefficients, and uh, if you have non-constant coefficients, you can, okay, you can hide them in di different ways, actually. You can hide them in the x principle. Yeah, okay. So, yes, uh, I, I assume constant coefficients right now. So why do you choose this as a definition for uh, identifiability? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that this is my choice. I identify. I mean, you presented it, so it's your. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's. It, I mean, it's. I, the, yeah. I, the point is, I don't see intuitively why this definition says that these this particular parameter which satisfy these conditions is actually identifiable. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it would take a theorem to prove that. But no, you see, no, but you see, no, you're no, defining. No, but you see, you're defining identifiable using this method, using this definition. So I want to see that that. Is intuitive at least. So okay. you explain slowly. Yes. Point in for, hour, example, for, exa measure? for example, maybe you will give an example. Are you going to give an example? I will discuss examples. So, uh, but um, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you gave you gave some very simple examples earlier mm -hmm. where some variables are identifiable in one case and the other one mm -hmm. not. Now, would that satisfy this kind of condition? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so could yeah. you illustrate that? Uh, yeah, first, first, may I uh, maybe uh, re re rephrase what's written here? Okay. Could you, could you go back? Uh, to examples. Yeah, could you uh, actually request here? Yeah. So request okay, so uh, this, this was... One slide more, mm -hmm. because it shows the system. That's the easiest ah. one. <laughs> the one that's not. That does yeah, yeah, not but so just, I wanted, I wanted to use the formulas. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, this is the system. Yeah. Okay. Which one do you want to win, first or second? Well, you see, to prove something is not identifiable is very hard according to that definition. Because you have to show that for so every which, p, no, no. Which for every p and every q, uh, the, some of them fails. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes. To, to show Pro something is identifiable according to that definition is to produce a p and a q. Right? Yes, yes. Which is, in some sense, easier because you can show okay, it. Which one do you want to discuss now? So, I like, I like first of all, to see the one that is identifiable. Okay, okay. So could you explain this? Okay, so here, uh, in this example, this we, don't, we don't have input, okay? okay. We only have parameters. Okay. And for P from definition, I choose, can you write here? Go what, is, what is Y for, for, from the definition? Y? Y from the definition is Y? No, no, no. the one that uh, you used in the definition. Ah, so, yeah, yes, okay. So, uh, it's the Y that you wrote uh, in uh, the last line. Yeah, That's so, the right from uh, the definition. Yeah. Uh, every set of parameters, I mean one, or two, and x, x, yes, yeah, x star, they define y. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a map from parameters to y, and I want to know if I can go back. So if I can see in y, understand what parameters were. So, so the, the, do you confirm that the y that is written on the last line? Is the same y that appears? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. 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 There's a solution. Yes, there's a solution. It is a solution. See, the, the problem is identified. I mean, the reason why it's identified is because of the uh, linear dependence of the exponential function than one. Yes, in some sense, uh, this is the reason. Right. I mean, you 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 get two points and then you can solve them. Okay. But, so, but you, you see, so but how does this being identifiable for mu one and mu two fit into your definition? That's what I want to know. Yes, in, uh, for my definition, uh, uh, I, I, I take the polynomial p to be just mu one. So I what was p? Uh, p that that says what uh, choice of parameters are degenerate. So mm -hmm. for every choice of parameters such that mu one is not zero. Do you want to use uh, that mu one? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So uh, my p of that in this situation is just mu mu one. Sorry. So. For every choice of parameters, then okay. 
whenever v1 is non zero, uh, I claim, so, yeah, so, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. so, uh, I, I claim that uh, knowing, uh, knowing function y, oh, I see, function y is enough to find values, find the values. One, two, and X star. And William, uh, not just uh, this is the case, it is what uh, a modeler would actually accept as a, as a definition. Uh, yeah, this was, is. Uh, the question is based on measurements, can we uniquely find new one, new two, and X star? Yeah. So, why, why, is, why isn't that the definition? This is precisely what's written there. No, no I don't why. understand the example. I no, understand the example. No, knowing why. Yeah. No, knowing y is what is measured, yes. by knowing y, can you find mu1, right. mu2, and x time? Yeah, and, and I just said why. I just pointed it out that it was because of the independence of the two functions, the, one the, and the no, exponential function. No, no. The, the, the reason why this is correct, why you can find, is a mathematical question uh, about algorithms or about some theory. You're asking about the definition. So right. first, you, let's address your question about definition. Right. Your question about the definition was, why is this a natural definition? Do you confirm that this was your question? Yeah. Okay, so uh, he justified this by, well, he explained it by uh, giving a concrete example, and we added... The, and oh, okay, so, 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 you're, so, so, so what you're saying is that the definition is a sufficient condition for that you actually can identify the derivatives. Is that correct? Because you, no, have no. The, you have a theorem. What do you mean you can identify the variables? I'm not sure. The definition says... The definition says, says, says that you can identify so the variables. So Let's, my question is, is there an alternate definition that's equivalent to what you should, what you should find here? Oh, there are plenty of alternative definitions. Not alternate, equivalent. There are many equivalent definitions. Okay, good. Logic, you know, in logic, you modify something that is a change the formula. No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, I mean you, do, you said you can solve for the variable. You can, you, you can talk in a few points and you can find the, the, the value of these, uh, esti estimate these parameters. Yes, yeah, so, okay. so there is an algorithm uh, that, uh, but that... But that's what you introduced me to you, say what is identified. Would you please not interrupt? I, I'd like to answer your sure. question. So there is an algorithm yeah. that will, if and only if this holds, will provide, after some computational time, actual expressions of, of the parameters. Of the parameters in terms of the other thing. In okay. terms of... So that's why, it if is and only if you're saying. Correct. Okay, fine. But, but that's, that's fine. fine. How, that's however, fine. Um, uh, for, for, as far as we understand from the modeler's point of view, yeah. this is the main definition and not uh, a definition through an algorithm. So if you yes. have a theorem that's even only if, sorry, then why don't you state this as a theorem and then define that, say condition one and condition two are equivalent, and then if they satisfy that, we call it identifiable. Because, uh, so uh, it's not stated that way, because psychologically it's more correct to state it this way. Why? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't have to make sense to you uh, to be psychologically correct uh, to, and to be beneficial for the community. But, but what so, is wrong if you do have an even only a theorem to first state that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are equivalent? And then if you settle any of this, it's called identifiable. Uh, okay, let me I, I, I answer your question. That's the best way to prove to the theorem. You're incorrect. Right. Uh, because. Uh, your style. The, the okay, same. I'm not going to argue your style. Okay, fine. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah. So it looks like in this definition, say you want to show the primary data I is identifiable. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't rely on any of the other parameters. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So uh, you can identify regardless of what, you, can you identify other parameters on, on that? Okay. So, 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 then, so then in the previous example, in order to say identify um, mu next star or mu, mu, mu two, say in that example, you needed to first know what mu one was. I mean, the way how do you proceed? I mean, so uh, do I understand right that you ask uh, why my uh, the way I wrote formulas relied uh, on, on, on the previous parameters? Right. Yes? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, so. this is just a way I show the infallibility. Right. So it's 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 a way. So of there's doing. a way of of you can make right. a substitution. Yes. You can make a substitution. Oh sure, right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, yeah, but the, there is a way to access directly mid two. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Now um. And uh, let me just uh, so follow up. Uh, Richard raised a very good point because in for example this example the parameter v one is identifiable. So the whole model is a bit ill. But the parameter mu one is healthy. Mm -hmm. It's you can find it, and the definition applies to the situation. Mm -hmm. So it says that nothing is that bad. Now, now I did, okay. uh, Richard actually prompts me for another question. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but uh, let's go back to the definition. Okay. Okay. Now, from what I see here, well, by, the, by the way, this definition is not sort of rigorously finished, uh, you know, read, written with all details. So he doesn't, again, say what y is or on the slide. So what there do you is... mean he didn't say what y is? Yeah, so he's, he, he talked through it, but he didn't explain it on the slide, what y is. Yeah, but what, y is a solution of corresponding differential equation that yeah. exists because of the theorem of existence and uniqueness. Yeah, I, I okay. know that. Right. Okay. Okay. I know yeah. that you're using implicit function or implicit or the other. But, uh, I, I'd like to ask you, the last two lines, is that a conclusion or is it part of the definition? It's a part of the definition. If the corresponding y determines the value uniquely, then I say that it's globally identifiable. So, so the such that has two points, well, actually have three points, is that how I should be reading it? Or what? The points are no. quantifiers. The, well, these bullets are quantifiers, and this is Formula. So for every, for every happens. Can you write down maybe ah. the formula? Uh, actually, as we will work okay. on the paper. All right, that's better. And that's better. Okay. Do you want me to write the formula? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm, so, so you see, why I'm asking, which was wrong is that, see, the 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 identifiability suppose is supposed to depend on the system, and if you if I just look at the first two conditions. That does not. Then, but you're saying that that's the hypothesis, so that it, the conclusion has to have, and the whole thing is identifiable. Yeah, there is three the, the, okay. where you're looking. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is this, these are quantifiers for every every so, something. So, so that means that. Okay. All right. Well, I have searched through fine. many different ways of stated. No, 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 no. I want to understand what it means. Yes. Okay? So oh. now I will have a better understanding. Thanks. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's that's great. That's, that's really great. That's, that's great. So, so I mean, see, I was missing the tie. If I just look at the two conditions such that because it looks, of course, but it is such that if for every day, then this. It's just for like a logic, okay. like such no, that. No, okay. no, okay. No, no, I. Can you write on the formula? Yeah. For, formula. No, I, 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 I think the way settled on this, this point. Yeah, just maybe, maybe the structure of slide was a little bit misleading, so I just wanted to avoid a large mass of, of plain text, so I wanted to structure this understand, somehow. Understand. And no, the no, structure. No, this one, this one. So the, what is really written is that for almost every, for every, for almost every theta, for almost every u, uh, then, and then what happens? The i, and can you write it formally? What it means? It's you. Can d. Um, yes. Yes. No. Or the finite. Uh, oh, I will have to introduce this. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay. So, uh, the, the i can can be read from and read from the measured host. There is a way to formally state it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is in the paper. We'll this is a, a bit informal phrase, of course. Like in, in the paper, we say that. Rigorously, just just to avoid the explosion of the definition. It's possible. It's not super complicated. Yeah, yeah it's just some words about functions and, and equations. And the point that this type of definition, to the rest of our search through a like, big search of the literature, mm -hmm. is uh, is what uh, a model would intuitively also think that this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And um, from mathematician point of view, and from the algorithmic point of view. Uh, once no, no. We, we see that we get stuck using the definition, 
No, no, I so we'll develop some theory to address it. Now I understand it definitely that much better. And I understand uh, why it makes a little sense or why it's determinable. Uh, identifiable because of the last line. Okay. And I wasn't clear about that. I was just reading kind of the two things because that was in such that and I didn't and I thought that was a conclusion. Rather than that's also one of the properties of being identifiable in the definition. So that last line actually captures identifiability. Indeed, yes. Indeed. Not, yes, not, not the two points there. No, no, two points are just quantifiers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, okay so. Um, okay, th th there are different ways to establish identifiability and non identifiability. So for local identifiability, that means that you uh, cannot, may maybe you cannot find the value of the parameter uniquely, but you have just a finite number of options. There are fairly uh, efficient algorithms based on computational Jacobian matrix. They go back to some late 70s by Hyman Trainer, and uh, later they were refined and implemented by Sadoglavich and some other authors. So uh, the, I will not speak a lot about local infability because algorithmically this question is more or less solved. And, and because this measured computation is quite cheap. Just implicit function theory. Yeah, just implicit function theory. So you can do it without for large systems without much problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, instant thing is global infability and this differs dramatically. So uh, there are actually a bunch of methods uh, what, that address this problem for in some situations and cases. So uh, w uh, historically, one of the oldest methods is Taylor series method. I will not go into details. Uh, it somehow looks on power series expansions of all these functions. Uh, and the uh, issue is that in general, we don't know how far should you expand them. So uh, the method relies on certain bounds. And to the best of our knowledge, the, there are no general bounds. There are bounds only in some cases. And in these cases, they are sometimes exponential. This is a bit painful for computation. So it's, uh, we, we haven't seen any implementation of this method. So it's, as well. As, as well. So it's uh, relies on these bounds that are not that complete. Uh, and there is a whole family of algorithms based on differential elimination. And this was actually initiated by this uh, control theory people, the Fleiss and their co-authors, and then brought to the other communities and developed further. So this is, I, I, I could feel the whole slide of people who contributed in this, this area of research. So I mentioned some, just the earliest. Uh, uh, one, one short question. Mm -hmm. Is the condition on the Jacobian matrix uh, one of what you just call finite options? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this this is what I call fine, fine options. This 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 is checked by Jacobian matrix. So okay. Rank of it is. Yes. Yes. Rank it's full or yeah. Constant rank condition. Okay. So uh, so uh, I want to give a small overview of these differential elimination approaches. So uh, roughly speaking, you can divide them in two different uh, parts, uh, depending on how do you think about parameters. So first part, and historically it, would be, it is the first, is the following. So let's just return to our system with exponent and shift that we already have seen. Uh, what they say, we say that uh, let mu1 and mu2 be also functions, but constant functions. So they say that they are functions, and add two new equations. mu1 dot is 0, mu2 dot is 0. So in this situation, we have just okay, so one, two, three, four differential equations. And now we can uh, do differential elimination, compute characteristic set. I will not go into details. There's some, there's some sort of algorithms. So the algorithm that computes certain representation of an ideal defined by these equations. And uh, it's even that y dot is non zero, is non zero function. So it's even some non, non degeneracy condition. We have only one characteristic set, and I wrote on the part of it, and this part actually gives almost the same formulas I wrote already. Mm -hmm. So you can, 
just see these three polynomials as linear equations in x, mu1, and mu2, and you can express them. So, and now you can deduce global diffability because you have formulas, then it's global identifiable. If you don't have formulas, it's a bit more tricky to explain why it is not global identifiable, and uh, we haven't seen full rigorous proof yet, so to, didn't find it on, 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 the, on the sketch proof. So, uh, but okay, anyway, th th this method works like that, and there are some possibilities to tweak, to speed up it. Uh, but the point is that it is still very slow, even for modest size uh, equations. There are I would say there are. Okay, let me point it. By, by the way, so mm -hmm. um, just to maybe possibly explain uh, why it could be slow. Yes, yes, I will give some reasons right now. Uh, you, you, you yeah, I, I was going to explain this. Okay, so could you please explain? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, one reason is why it's slow is that you enlarge you uh, quite recently enlarge number of variables. So all your parameters are now variables. Mm -hmm. It's not very convenient for the government algorithm at all. And uh, another reason is that the Rosenfeld government algorithm actually computes much more th that you really need, because I have this dot, dot, dot here. I will not use it. And this, this is the rest of the characteristic set. And it might be actually much larger than the part I will really use. But, but no, not just that, uh, that there are extra terms, but also the first terms give you expressions. Yes, yes. And, and that's, sometimes a customer doesn't ask for expressions. The, uh, it's interesting to know the expressions for some problems. For some problems, they're just not needed. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, question is maybe can that be avoided? So you see, so that's. Uh, yes. This automatically computes more, more, and more. So this is, this is good if you really want these results, but sometimes, and quite often, you really don't, don't care much. Well, in, okay. in general, you probably can get formulas if the mu1, mu2, and I mean, the parameters appear non-linearly. Oh, sure. But I'm asking about global identifiability, yeah, yeah. so then they will be linear. Yeah. What? They will be linear expressions. No. If they're global identifiable. Yes, okay. they will. Look, look, look. If instead of mu2 in your y equation, I say I have mu1 times mu2, whether it makes sense or not. Okay. I mean, when, when, you, when you have a system of differential equations and you compute uh, characteristic set, there's no guarantee that variables appear linearly. Uh, no. Uh, uh, there is a theorem that says that global identifiability is equivalent to having to appear, to linear appearance of oh. variables, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's. Uh, I, I mean, okay. I would well, say the definition, the definition will require that I can solve for them. Correct, but it's, it yeah. turns out to be equivalent. Yes, uh, it, 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 it's equivalent. Solving has to be uh, okay. Yeah, so we haven't so we, we haven't haven't seen full proof well, of this we, theory, we know, but we know the fifth degree equation can have a formula to solve it, right? <laughs> so how do you so tell me that you can always solve it? Well, it's no. We, we, we don't. We, well, so you, you can read the proof and see. And see. Oh, okay. Well, but you, you can't. But if you can't explain how you can actually solve fifth degree equation, that's okay. But it doesn't apply here. Well, then that's why. So I like to ask why. Why does fifth degree equation? Go well, ahead? Don't maybe you'll invite him for another talk in which he will explain the proof. No, no. I don't, I don't want to read your proof. I want you to understand why fifth degree equation no occur. Uh, if you can give us example that it will occur, we will oh, no, have no, pleasure no, no, considering it. No, no. You, the burden is on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he can decline to answer your question. Okay, fine. That's fine. Accept it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this, this, is, this is the first, first subfamily of this differential elimination algorithm to treat uh, uh, parameters as variables, as differential variables. Another approach is to say that uh, they are actually coefficients so we do some differential algebra over the field of rational functions. Okay. Uh, in one and two. To interrupt you since I've asked the question. <laughs> the, the previous slide. Suppose I replace mu two and write mu mu three to the fifth power. It will not be globally identifiable. 
Why not? Because, because, because you have to take the fifth route, right? Yes. But there are only five routes. But this, uh, this is local in five Ah, you want unique. Unique? Mm. Ah, see, that explains why. <laughs> okay. See? Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, and... I mean, because it's unique, so you can't have 50 green version. Yes, this is what's written in my definition. Or if it's 50 green, it's your tractor. So, well, no, not only that, you can't. You have... No, actually, this is still unique because it's a repeated wood. Pardon? It's a repeated wood. I've, I've mu free to the fifth power. So it's still unique, right? Well, it's but it's still no, unique, it's, but it's, it's, it's unique but only it's in the generate situation, then this mu3 to the fifth power will be equal to zero. No, no, no. Mu3... Where's mu3? Ah, okay. Right. Mu3 to the fifth would be mu3 unique, to the fifth. Yeah. but not mu3, mm -hmm. so... Another question. But, so, but there are situations in which that happens. So, uh, right? I mean, you get a formula for mu, mu 3 to the fifth power equal to something. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not global and viable case. Uh, this global. is a case uh, that, that can that's, be made global and viable after parameterization, but this is another story. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So, that, so then you can determine then if parameters are not globally identifiable using the method also by saying if the, if you get them nonlinearly. Yes, the yes. So if 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 uh, you don't have this linear uh, parallelos, then it's not global and definable. So when you say global, what kind of range do you allow your your parameter space be? See the then. Huh? Uh, the whole thing. The whole uh, the space whole, or complex numbers. The whole view of complex numbers. Uh, uh, subtracted uh, a whole subset. Yeah, subtracted a close, close, the yeah, subset. Yeah, close constants. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Good. So, and the second idea, yeah, is to consider parameters as coefficients. And again, now, now you have just two equations, and you can compute characteristic set again. And uh, I will not write the whole thing. I will just write one polynomial there. Uh, uh, elements of characteristic set that doesn't contain state variables. Uh, in this approach, I usually call input-output equation. <coughs> okay, because we don't have uh, input in this example. It's actually output equation. Uh, so this formula doesn't give you a way to immediately write what is mu1 equal to. Equals two. Yes? So, but then... Uh, you can say that, uh, assume that I can measure these two coefficients. Like if uh, y dot and y are somehow independent in some sense, then I maybe can measure these coefficients. And if I can measure them, I know me one, and they can express me two. So I, I would you I, I, could you explain? So uh, first of all, what you what you are presenting is not your result. Right? Yes, yes, yes. You're it's it's existing yeah. methods. Yes, I explain some family of approaches that compute characteristic set or something similar. There are also options. Can you just explain in some detail? Yeah. Detail, so, so just vaguely explain. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how how does this method proceed? They compute. Uh, such a polynomial that doesn't uh, include axis, doesn't include state variables, then they assume that coefficients of this polynomial can be measured. And so if they can be measured, then the next step is to check if you can find formulas for, for mu's from the coefficients. Like in this situation, I can find formulas for mu1 and mu2 from coefficients. Because mu1 is a coefficient itself, and mu2 is a ratio of two coefficients. So, uh, two things are important here is that I use certain assumption and I don't touch uh, initial conditions. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, now I speak only about me one and me two. So, yeah, so the, the, this, is, this is the outline. You compute equation and then take the coefficients and try to express your parameters in terms of these coefficients. Now, you, the example here, I don't know how, I mean, this is an example, so. Um, it, you do have nonlinear terms, but each each parameter is linear. Is that what you mean? No, I can express parameters as a, uh, I can express mu one and mu two 
as a rational function in these polynomials. Are you talking about triangular systems then? You uh, check... Uh, parameters? Pardon? For the parameter, you get a triangular system? You can do it using triangular, triangular system. system. So we'll there are, was an algorithm to answer that question, right? Okay. Yeah, so you, you just check that and you have certain freedom. You can use triangular system, you can use government basis, maybe you can use something else. It's okay. mm -hmm. it, it, it details and they're they, they different, different mm -hmm. for different authors. Yeah. There, it, it, is, it is a family of algorithms, not just one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this approach uh, is in many cases faster than previous one because you take less variables in terms of Feld Grobner and you take give him less equations, so this this is supposed to work faster. There is the second stage, but you somehow divide the problem into stages. It usually helps in, in computation. Uh, however, the, uh, there are still some issues here. One is that Rosenfeld Grobner still computes more than they want, so you still get certain formulas. And you still get other elements of characteristic set that you were not interested in. And the second issue is that this assumption that coefficients can be really measured uh, fails in some situations. I just want to show you one of them. <laughs> this will look a bit artificial. I will explain later what, what does this example mean in, in, in more general context. So this is a system of form that we consider. We have only one state variable, and this is constant. And we can observe this constant, and we can observe some linear combination of, of, of some linear function of this constant. So then this input-output equation will be of this form, because you can just substitute y1 instead of x here, and it will get rid of, get rid of x's. Okay, so, and now the assumption is that you can measure coefficients, and coefficients are actually our parameters. So the method would yield that mi1 and mi2 are identifiable. But actually they are not, because let's just uh, analyze the system, because this is, they're not functions, they're just constants. They are not identifiable, because uh, you can take any value a for mu1, and then for mu2, you, can, you just compute this number. So you take different a's. For mu1, this formula gives you valid values for mu2. And you have infinitely many of them. So, so this assumption about the observability of uh, coefficients of input-output equation is a bit subtle point for this method. Uh, and so what does example mean? What kind of situations does it capture? Where, where in your definition on identifiable involve any choice of y1 and y2? Could you repeat this? Where in your definition on identifiable parameters mm -hmm. did you say for any choice of y? I say for any choice of parameter. No, ah, but okay. don't you wrote for okay, any okay, choice so of y1 and y2. Ah, okay, so. so... So he's commenting using some equivalent statement. Uh, he would also express this non-identifiability using his definition. Perhaps that's a good point to express it. Uh, um, expressing uh, would uh, amount to solving the system and showing... So you're inverting, you're already inverting the input output, is that correct? But you're now thinking of y1 and y2 so as the so input. So he'll, he'll just write down by, by the definition, why this is, doesn't work. It's possible to write in different ways, but uh, since we didn't state the theorem, uh, yeah. actually, so, uh, and we, all we have is the definition, then let's just argue by definition. So this is intuitive argument, okay. so far because there was no theorem. So yes, yes. yes. Now, so I'll you know, check this by definition. Uh, let's say that if you have fixed some parameters, so what is y? Uh, y what is y? Uh, y y one y two. Yeah. So in this, in, in terms of parameters, y one and y two can be expressed because we can just solve this we equation. Write, write uh, y one is just x star; it's constant, and y two is mu one x star plus mu two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, now, uh, assume that we picked some values of x star, the one and the two, okay? So we have values of y1 and y2. Mm -hmm. And now I take any other value a for, for, for mu1 